After a topsy-turvy race last week at the Indianapolis Raceway Park, we arrive here in Watkins Glen, New York at one of the fastest, one of the wildest, and arguably one of the best road courses out there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Watkins Glen International Raceway for the running of the Lake Effect Ice Cream 100. What's going on everybody? Caleb here and welcome to race number 10 on the NR2003 2023 Rowdy Energy Pro Series season. We're here at the Watkins Glen International Raceway here for eight laps of action today. The drivers are actually going to be taking on the boot layout today. Which will increase the distance to 3.4 miles around this infamous road course. Arguably, I'd say one of the best road courses in NR 2003. It's got some really good racing. And I have no doubt we're going to see some good racing today. Had a couple shakeups after last week at IRP. One of those being the point standings. Let's take a look at those coming into this week. Vinny Scholl still currently holds the point lead, but just oh, by four points over Richard Kinghart. Scholl struggled with a little bit last week. Kinghart was able to capitalize and close that gap. Kinghart starting in third position today. Scholl starting a little deeper in the field. We'll have to see what happens and if Kinghart could potentially take the points lead here today. Looking at the rest of the point standings, Matt Tuck is only 16 points back from Vinny Schultz. Drew Webb fell back a couple places after he struggled last week as well. He is 20 points back. Harris Larvin Alonzo, 32 points back. Chad Gurkowski, 33 points back. Skylar Taylor is 36 points back. Priya McShane, 44 back. Cole DeHill, 53 back. And Angel Gutierrez is 56 points back. On the pole for today's event, it is Skylar Taylor in the four. Have to see what Taylor can do, hopefully, get their first win on the season. It's going to be interesting, though, because we've seen here at Watkins Glen, outside lane does get a pretty good jump, so we'll have to see who comes out on top after turn number one. But we'll just have to wait and see. So, we'll get these cars rolling off real quick. And we will go over your starting lineup here for the Lake Effect Ice Cream 100. Making sure everybody rolls off of the grid and it looks like they will. So with that being said, let's take a look at your starting lineup for today's race at Watkins Glen. As mentioned on the pole, it's the 4 of Skylar Taylor, starting alongside the 88 of Chad Grakowski. Row number 2, we have the 98 of Richard Kinghart, starting alongside the 97 of Herzl Armin Alonso. Row number 3, we have the 64 of Stuart Gratton, starting alongside the 52 of Cameron Lassard. Row 4, we have the 87 of Caleb Toro, starting alongside the 43 of Lucia Torres. And row number 5, rounding out the top 10, we have the 61 of Tanner Barton, starting alongside the 28 of Tyree Cartman. Row number 6, we have the 7 of Jim Vincent Left and the 71 of Cole Raymond. Row number 7, we have the 99 of Brad Stover and the 27 of Jason Lona. Row 8, we have the 73 of Cole DeHill, starting alongside the 72 of Benny Moore. Row number 9, we have the 9 of Demar Patriot, starting alongside the 12 of Will Parrish. Row number 10, we have the 20, or sorry, the 16 of Benny Scholl, starting alongside the 20 of Landon Smith Jr. Row number 11, we have the 33 of Keith Drake, starting alongside the 55 of Stephen Colon. And rounding out the field in row 12, we have the 17 of Josh Harmon, starting alongside the 41 of Angel Gutierrez. 
Race report will be on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. It'll be an eight-lap race today, 24 entries. There will not be a pit cycle, so we will go to the end without making a pit stop. And as for road courses, cautions are off. So hopefully we won't have too much trouble, but we'll just have to see. Car is coming into the final couple corners now. Ace Car will be pulling off momentarily and coming through the final corner. It'll be Skylar Taylor and Chad Grakowski leading them to the green flag. We are racing in the Lake Effect 100 here at Watkins Glen. Up through the S's and to the top of the hill, it is Chad Grakowski. And the 88 getting that jump on the outside, and he will have the lead as they come down the long straight. Not using the bus stop on this layout, they will go straight to the carousel. Here's Alvin Alonzo has cruised up to second place, and they have actually got a bit of a gap to third place now of Cameron Lassard. Skyler Taylor drops to fourth on the start, and is now being battled by Richard Kinghart in the 98. And we got a lot of battling going on through the field. Vinny Scholl's actually dropped back a bit on the start. Now fighting the 33 of Keith Drake for the 22nd position. Have to see if Vinny can recover. But... Front Jagurkowski holding well. And something else to watch out for at this track is the final corner. It's known that some drivers here will go wide and even hit the wall off of the corner. Gutierrez goes a bit wide. Cameron Lassar goes a bit wide. Here comes Skylar Taylor trying to take advantage. Josh Harmon went a little bit wide there. Nobody got in the wall, though, it seems, which is good. Skylar Taylor takes advantage of Lassar going wide. Taylor moves up to third. Chad Grakowski holding the lead. Skylar Taylor slips a bit wide in the S's. This is going to allow Cameron Lassar to take the position back. As now, it seems like most of the field has calmed down, except for Tyreek Hartman, who is moving up positions. He's now going to pass Stuart Gratton for 7th after starting 10th, and is now already at the back bumper of Lucia Torres. Seems no matter what car he's in, Tyreek Hartman just can't be stopped, although we got a dive bomb here from Stuart Gratton. He's trying to take that spot back. Harry Hartman will stay clear and will have the preferred lane going into this corner here. Lucia Torres slips a little bit wide. Hartman not close enough just yet to take advantage, but he's going to close right back into the back bumper. And back here, Caleb Toro goes for a move on the 71 of Cole Raymond. Not able to make it stick for now. Still up front, it's the 88 of Chad Gronkowski. That was Arvin Alonso sitting in second still. Cameron Lassard and Skylar Taylor trying to gain on these two. Gronkowski slides a little bit wide. It, the, I believe the 97's there. Here's Arvin Alonso. He's looking to the inside. He's going to try to outbreak him going into one. They're side by side for the lead. Gronkowski uses the runoff area, but Alonzo, well, he has a checkup going up the hill. And through the yeses, Alonzo is actually going to be passed for second. Lassard is trying to get through. They're going to stay side by side as they go down the long straight. And they're going to stay side by side as they go into the carousel. Alonzo's going to have the preferred line. And Alonzo 
is going to hold on to second for the time being. But Lassard looking back to the inside. He's going for it again. Side by side as they enter the boot section. Alonso has the preferred line here, but Lassard hanging tough on the left-hand side. They're going to remain side by side heading down the boot straight. And they're still side by side. They just... Both these guys staying door to door. Skylar Taylor looking for maybe an opportunity to take advantage if these two stay side by side. Because once we get into the final corner, one of them is probably going to have to give. And it looks like that's going to be Herzl Arvin Alonso seeding the position to the 52. But the 52 is in the wall. Alonso's by. As we look further through the field, we have Jason Lona hitting the outside wall. Benny Scholes might have got into it as well, and something happened to the 99 of Stover. No, if he just off the pace, if he got into the wall good, or what happened to the 99? Something big did happen. I'll put a replay somewhere on the screen. But Gronkowski pulling a bit of a gap now to Harry Jalarvin Alonso. Lassard, after getting in the wall, has fallen back a bit. Now into the clutches of Skylar Taylor. And Taylor's going to go for a move going into the carousel. You can see that damage to the 52. And as they go into the boot section, Lassard will have the preferred lane. And Cameron Lassard will stay clear of the four for now. Tyreek Hartman. He's going for a move on the 98 of Kinghart. Going for fifth. Not in his usual car we've seen him in this weekend, but he's still he's still being Tyreek Hartman, it seems. As he's already looking for a top five spot. Oh, but he might have outbreaked himself here a little too hard going into this corner. Lucio Torres able to gain, but not enough to get alongside the 28. Up ahead, here's Alarvin Alonso. Looking on the 88. Tried to go to the outside there. Is he going to maybe try to outbreak the 88 into the final corner? He's going to try it. They're going to door into the inside wall. Goes Herzl Arvin Alonso. And he spins across the racing surface. I think everyone's going to miss him. And add that to the unfortunate list of heartbreaks. For Herzl Arvin Alonso this season. As Chad Grakowski slips wide off the final corner. Alonso tried to capitalize. They made contact. And that sent Herzl Arvin Alonso into the inside wall. Tough, tough break for Herzl Arvin Alonso. And that 97 team, that, that's tough to see. He's got speed week in and week out. But just can't get it done, it seems. Have to see if he can make up any of that ground back. Right now, I think he's sitting, I believe, somewhere around the 20th position. So... Unfortunate for here's Joel Arvid Alonso, but Chad Gronkowski now has a pretty decent sized lead. Back to the 52 of Lassard, King Hart still in third, Taylor in fourth, and Tyreek Hartman currently rounds out your top five. But this race isn't over yet. I have to see if Lassard, Hart, King Hart, anyone can maybe try to close that gap to Chad Grakowski. Looking back to the field, we have Will Parrish going for a move on the 7 of Jim Vincent left. And that, that runoff is 
pretty powerful thing into turn number one, because you can get a pretty good run by using that, and it looks like Parrish is going to see the Jim Vincent left and is going to lose a spot to the 72 of Benny Moore. There's Jalabra Alonzo. It looks like he's got past the 73. That puts him in 18th position. And it looks like we got the 71 Cole Raymond battling with the 64 of Stuart Gratton. This is for the 7th position. It looks like Raymond is going to get it. Just three coming to two laps to go here at Watkins Glen. Pretty quick race today, all things considered. Fastest lap so far actually belongs to the 52 of Cameron Lassard. With a 146.159, almost three tenths clear of the next fastest lap, which just so happens to be Tyree Cartman, who's now actually going after the four of Skylar Taylor for the fourth position. Trying to potentially set up a pass in the final corner. Not going to quite get there yet. Richard Kinghart swings it wide, scrapes the outside wall. Not too much harm in that except for losing a bit of momentum. And that lap, Lassard actually gained a couple tenths on Chad Krakowski, But if he wants to catch him and pass him... That's not going to be enough. Back here, Tyreek Hartman. Right on the back bumper of Taylor. Looking to the left-hand side as they get to the top of the hill. Not quite going to be able to get by yet. And it's going to stay on the back bumper of the four as they go through the carousel. And enter the boot section. Lassard visually looks like he's still gaining on that 88. Oh yeah, Lassard's definitely closing. Uh, we're coming to the white flag this time by. This is, well, I think we're in for an interesting finish here. Can Cameron Lassard run the 88 down? He's, I think he's definitely got within a second now. Now, it, it, especially here, it's one thing to catch somebody; it's a whole different to pass them. But Lassard maybe trying to set something up here for the final corner. By coming through the final corner, the 88 into the wall, off the final corner. Here comes the 52. White flag is in the air. One lap to go. Oh, one car into the pit wall in the back. That's Stephen Cologne. Of course, cautions are off, so we stay green. But Lassard right at the back bumper of the 88 of Chad Gronkowski. He's peeking to the left-hand side. And down the long straight for the final time. The 52. He peeks to the inside of the 88 through the carousel. Here comes Cameron Lassard. He takes the lead away. Going into the boot section. Can Chagrakowski fight him back? Does he have anything for the 52? Cameron Lassard already trying to pull away here. Chad Gronkowski trying to stay with the 52. Probably hoping the 52 overdrives the final corner. Here we go. 88, is he trying to set something up? Grakowski. Cameron Lassard, Chad Grakowski into the final corner. Grakowski drives it in. Grakowski looks to the bottom. 
but I don't think it's gonna be enough. Cameron Lassard wins at Watkins Glen. You won! You know what? You drove a great race out there. Chad Grigowski got close, but it just wasn't enough to hold off the 52 of Cameron Lassard. What a job by him. What a race that was. My oh my, what a finish by these two. They they put on a show for us. And I guess further in the proof that I made in pre-race, Watkins Glen really is a fast, wild, and one of the best road courses that there might ever be. But taking a look at your finishing results here from Watkins Glen, Cameron Lassard gets the win. Jack Arkaski comes up oh so close, just short in second. But still, good run for him nonetheless. Richard Kinghart is going to finish third. And Vinny Sh with Vinny Schultz finishing 19th, I think that will put Kinghart into the points lead. But that's going to round out your podium. Skyler Taylor walks away with a fourth place finish. And Tyree Cardman rounds out your top five. Looking further on down the field, Lucia Torres finishes 6th, Raymond comes in 7th, Stuart Gratton in 8th, Caleb Toro in ninth, and Tanner Parton rounds out your top 10. And looking where everybody finished, I do believe that Richard Kinghart will take the points lead after this. But, oh yeah, what a finish that was. <laughs> Next race, we will be going to Pennsylvania. We'll be going to the Pocono Mountains, to the Pocono Raceway, for the Reese's 200. A premiere on November 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sign-ups, of course, will be... I guess tonight, later tonight, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, I hope to see you all there. Once again, congratulations to Cameron Lassard for winning the Lake Effect of Ice Cream 100 here from Watkins Glen. And I hope to see you all next time. You all have a good one. Here are the point standings after race 10 on the season.